This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, another pet tip you can use, celebrating the holidays with your pets and children's better understanding of animals. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get started. Hey, do you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's national award-winning author and animal advocate, Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca. Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Email us at doggydivashow at aol.com. That's D-O-G-G-Y D-I-V-A show at aol.com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. We're here with Monica Layton, president of Professional Pet Sitting, who's going to give us our pet tip of the week. And Monica, you know, it's time for travel. We've got the holidays going on. Do you have any tips for um, hiring a pet sitter or just preparing our pets for travel if we're going to take them with us? So around this time of the year, everybody is wanting to, you know, go visit family, going on trips. But of course, we have to accommodate for our four-legged friends. Um, so some tips on looking for pet sitters. If you're looking to go somewhere and not bring your pet with you, a pet sitter is a great option. Um Checking to make sure that your pet sitting, your pet sitter is licensed, bonded, insured. Um, that's just the initial start out. And then I always, you know, suggest interviewing a couple people and kind of seeing who, you know, meshes well with your pet. Um, if they're available, you know, kind of to keep the same routine that your pet has. Um, if you get something that is, as close to your normal routine as possible. That's so much easier for your pet to acclimate. Um, they're way they're only, you know, adjusting to a new person and having met that person, you know, with a meet and greet before you travel. Then when they come in and take over, you know, the pet care, then they'll at least have met the person and they stay in their same routine in their same home. So it kind of gives them that little sense of security. That way, if you're not there, at least they're in their home where their, you know, their bed is and their furniture and, you know, they're, they're used to being there and used to being in that environment. If you are looking to travel with your pet, um, you know, I always tell people, you know, to be very cautious when you're flying. Make sure they can stay, you know, on board with you. Make sure you have the right size carrier. You don't want to get there and have there be issues. Um, making sure that your pet can comfortably fit underneath the seat. Um, even though they have a weight range, different breeds have different heights, different widths. Um, so you always want to make sure that in the space that they have to be in, you know, for airline regulation, that your pet can fit there comfortably. Um, and then also, you know, just very cautious about, you know, I don't recommend flying pets cargo. Um, but be very cautious with any other, you know, type of travel. They actually have services that will drive your pets from state to states, things like that. Um, if you are, you know, driving instead of flying and your pet's coming with, 
Um, you know, talk to your veterinarian before you go. Uh, maybe get some type of anti-anxiety medication for travel. So they have like the composures, the zilkines, um, which are the calming decapeptides from the mother's milk that will not sedate them, but it will just take away some of the anxiety. And they've also had a lot of great success with CBD products for taking away anxiety without any kind of sedation. Um, so those are all, you know, really, you know, good ways to calm them down naturally that's not going to lower their blood pressure or risk, you know, irregular heartbeats, things of that nature with real sedatives. Um, if you are going to be staying in a hotel with your pet, you know, making sure that you have some kind of crate or carrier for the room, um, checking with the hotel beforehand to make sure that if they have any specific requirements that you have all that handled. Um, if you are driving overnight and you know that you have to stop somewhere, um, definitely make sure that you know a pet friendly hotel on the route. Don't just, you know, leave that to, you know, oh, well, you know, feeling tired, let's find a hotel in this town um, and then have to, you know, kind of search for something pet friendly. So definitely, you know, kind of plan out how long you're going to be driving each day and where you're going to stay that will be okay with the pet. Um, the other thing I always tell people when they're driving too is rest stops. Rest stops are great, but a lot of people travel with their pets and so often it's a breeding ground for a lot of parasites. So make sure that when your pet's walking through the soil at rest stops, make sure that they're up to date on their um, heartworm and internal parasite prevention because a lot of the different worms um, can burrow through the pads of the feet and you get that in highly populated areas where pets are going and relieving themselves. Um, and also you can have, you know, a lot of wildlife, things of that nature, you know, along interstate routes and rest areas are kind of, you know what I mean? Those busy places, um, you know, for pets to relieve themselves. So always be cautious. And um, same thing, you know, with rainy waters, um, watching your pets walking through and drinking out of like puddles at rest stops, things of that nature, just because of um, leptospirosis risks and things of that nature. So always, you know, bring your own water for your pet when you travel. Try to stay in a small contained area when you're walking them. Um, you know, just make sure they're up to date on their preventions. And if you do all that and check with your vet about anti-anxiety products, you should have a good trip where not only you are happy, but your pet is too. And that is our ultimate goal. So thank you and have a safe trip, everyone. Thank you. Have a great week. Hello, everyone. Miss Olive and Sophia the Doggy Diva want to thank you for your amazing response to their special book, Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Home. And they want to let you know that Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Home is now available in both hardcover and softcover. And that's at Amazon.com. As Miss Olive says, woohoo, yippee. Thank you, everyone. Coming up, celebrating the season of snowflakes and jingle bells safely with our furry friends. Stay tuned. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. As a pet parent, I have always loved celebrating the holidays with my pets. Moments to treasure and... I just think it's one of the most wonderful things we could do. It just makes it like a complete holiday. And we have with us today our nutrition contributor, Kim Gablin, Senior Marketing Director at Bill Jack Foods. And she's here with us to share some ideas on how we can celebrate the holidays with our pets. Hey, Kim, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me on. I, I love talking about the holidays Isn't with it our pets. So that's, wonderful? This is great. <laughs> yeah. So can you share with our listeners um, what the holiday season, how we can... Uh, 
you know, do things with our pets safely, but in a fun way? Yeah, you know, I think that there's lots of things that, that we can do, you know, the, but the holidays are such a crazy kind of time, right? We're, we're looking for gifts, we're, you know, visiting family and friends and going out and celebrating. So, you know, sometimes our, our pets can get lost kind of in that mix. And so it's really kind of important to think about the things we can do to celebrate with them. And, you know, first and foremost, I always say that it's good to make some time for them, you know, so that's kind of plan in some time into your schedule to, you know, to just spend some time. If you like to cuddle and watch a movie, if you'd like to take a walk with them, you know, do make sure you don't miss that time over these next, you know, this time right before the holidays, because it could go by pretty quickly. Time does fly. I'm telling you, I can't believe that it's almost upon us. Can you share some tips to keep in mind when celebrating the holidays with our fur kids? We know there's so many things that happen, you know, during the holidays. And so I think, you know, one of the things to think about is decorations. You know, how can you kind of keep them safe around the decorations? And so do you have them, you know, up high enough? Um, you know, if you have candles, you want to, you know, be able to use fake candles maybe instead of real candles to avoid getting a tail, you know, in that, in that flame. Um, certainly being able to uh, think about mistletoe and holly and poinsettias. Because, you know, there are certain plants like those that can um, make dogs either um, really sick or kind of be poisonous to them. You know, and I, and I think, you know, thinking about your guests is really important, too. Um, not all guests feel comfortable around, you know, dogs. Um, I, so I know that may be hard for some people to imagine, but maybe they just didn't get a lot of exposure or maybe it's a bigger dog and that may kind of worry them. And so understanding the people who may be coming over your house and visiting you can really help because they may be a little bit anxious. So you might want to um, have your dog on a leash when they come over, um, maybe have some introduction time. Um, and your dogs um, may also be a little anxious. You know, my, my dog is always so excited to see guests. Sue, how are, how are, how are the girls? Very excited. They, I already <laughs> know before they get to the door, they're already, they're the welcoming committees going, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So it can be like a really exciting time. For some dogs, it may be a little over exciting, right? So, you know, maybe um, one of the things you can do that might be thoughtful for your dogs is um, if you're, if you have a guest coming over, have them text you or call you and let, let you know they're there. And instead of ringing the doorbell, which what oftentimes is like... What a great idea. Uh, yeah, oftentimes that results in pandemonium and everything. Mm-hmm. You can meet them outside with your dog. So you could just go out the front door, you know, put, put a leash on, go out the front door, meet them. And then sometimes that takes away some of the extra excitement, added excitement that maybe can get a little bit out of hand. Um, but at least then it's a nice way for your dog to see them, for them to see your dog. And then, you know, you can kind of go back in the house. If you walk in the house at my house without ringing the doorbell, those are just fine. But if you ring the doorbell, he is just, he's just crazy or whatever. So, so it could be making it a little bit more calm of a situation for the holidays. Well, and I agree. I always say the doorbell is the biggest trigger. I wrote down that texting thing so I could go out and greet him and bring them in because the doorbell is like, yay, we have company. That's a great idea. Oh my God. What ways can pet parents share holiday cheer with their pets? We know I, I always um, try to make sure that I get a stocking, for example, for, for Blizzard. I think that that's really great to be able to have like a little, their own little place where you can kind of give them their own little goodies. Um, it's always fun to put some small things in there, like some healthy treats. Um, I know that there's a ton of Bill Jack treats that, you know, we have some four-ounce sizes that fit right inside those stockings really easily. So you can kind of give them a variety of things. Um, you know, maybe some small toys or chew toys would be really good in there. And, you know, certainly... Um, we always think about, um, you know, celebrating holiday cheer sometimes with gifts. Um, but what about, you know, thinking about a gift of your time? You know, we were just talking about your time and how precious that is with your dogs. You know, maybe there's something extra you could do, like, you know, get some training lessons, for example. So you're, you're, not, you're giving them something that you guys could do together. Mm, bonding. Which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, or, you know, maybe your dog loves, if your dog loves to run around and um, would like to do agility maybe, you know, maybe spending some time um, looking into agility and seeing, you know, let's go to a few lessons and see what that's like. And, you know, that could be, an, uh, again, another way to give them something kind of special um, to be able to, to do something like that. And then, you know, I, I hear a lot of questions, you know, obviously um, from a nutrition standpoint about what to do about giving them holiday goodies. And so I'm always concerned about that because you may not know what's in in that Mm -hmm. particular food that's been prepared and so I always say you know stop by the store get 
get something special like some wet food for them. You know, then you know that it's a dog food that's been prepared appropriately. It doesn't have anything in it that should be bad for your dog. And you'll be able to say, hey, great, I got them something with turkey in it or something with beef in it. And you could add something special to their meal without really kind of completely disrupting, you know, what's going on with their food. I always think of the holidays. Holidays is, you know, whether it's with your family or with your friends or, you know, with our dogs, with our dogs, our cats, our pets, which are our family. You know, I mm-hmm. have such wonderful memories and I go back to when I was a child and, and my Nana sort of brought us up and she was from France. We did all these little traditions. But one thing she always did is we always had, you know, Johnny Mathis, Nat and Cole, Andy Williams playing <laughs> in our house from mm-hmm. Thanksgiving all the way through to Christmas. So I took on that tradition and my girls know I I start out the morning <laughs> with Nat can call and they know what's going to happen. They recognize the music. We're all in the holiday spirit. But that's sort of like a little tradition I've taken through the years for myself. And um, of course, I, the way I get the music has evolved a number of ways, but because uh, they don't have the records <laughs> and then they don't have like cassettes and they don't have eight tracks and now they don't mm-hmm. have this. But it's it's just something that I take in that tra- that that tradition um, with me and I love sharing it with my girls. So we sit around and, you know, we could be just reading, watching a Hallmark movie or whatever. And I have that Mm -hmm. music playing in the background. Do you have any Christmas traditions or holiday traditions that you and Blizzard have? Yes, we know. I love the fact that you do Hallmark movies together with the girls. Big time. (laughs) Blizzard and my daughter and I love to sit and watch movies and and just relax and kind of cuddle up and be cozy. We know we get under the blanket and, Mm -hmm. you know, Blizzard gets all curled up with us. And so that is one of my favorite things to do. But, you know, on on Christmas morning for us, um, I love watching um, Blizzard open his gifts. And so, you know, we, we make sure that we don't put any, any ribbon on them or anything, but we usually wrap a few things for him. We can't put them out any earlier because, you know, they, he can smell so well that he can find them before, before the holidays. Um, so, so we have to kind of save them and, and keep them kind of hidden, which I love. And then we, we get them out and then, you know, he loves to just rip those presents open and get his, his little goodies out. So, so that's probably one of my favorite things that I will, you know, I love taking pictures of it or some videos of it and posting it and sharing it with the family. So that's that's probably one of my favorite things. You're right. That That's what makes it special is all those memories that you have it together. It is. It's like little memories, little traditions, little fun things. And then when you sit and look back, it just, it brings you joy. So that that's, that's so nice. And it is. And our pets are our family. So we love to share that joy. And they actually make it a little more special, I think, when, when they're a part of uh, our little tradition. So, well, Kim. Yeah, we- absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and they just make us feel more relaxed. You know, when Whenever I'm stressed and I'm trying to think about what else I have to do, what else has to happen, I just need to sit down and take a minute with Blizzard. And he just comes over and he'll give me a big lick and he'll jump all around me and, you know, I'll feel instantly better. So it's, it's great to have some stress relief there as well. Uh, this I look at a chemist. They help me put a perspective and put me back into the moment. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's really not. It's not that bad. We'll just go on to the because that's how they look at life. They just live in the moment and they help to bring us back to kind of regroup. And I, I had to tell you Absolutely. something really, really quick, and then I want to. Um, I want. Uh, we'll ask. We'll let the listeners know where they can find out about all the the goodies at uh, Bill Jack. But my sister had called me, and of course, she wanted to know what what do I want for the girls? What do I want for the girls? So I just took a photo and ta- and texted to her, and I said, "This is what they love." And she goes, "Done, got it." And of course, when <laughs> I talk about this with you all the time, are the little jacks? They love them, and. And, you know, we order ours and we get it by the case. And so she's Mm going to, so they're going to have that. So I will have (laughs) them with their little bag. She puts them in gift bags for me. And Uh yeah, they've been getting them for a couple of years now. And they will love it. Like you said, I can't put them under the tree until we're ready to open presents because all mm-hmm. three heads will be in the bags. <laughs> they each get their own. So um, I'll have I to share that. a you know, picture I, with you on that. I w- oh, you have to do that, Sue. I would love that because, you know, what I love is, is you know, I always hear about – like, you know, grandparents of dogs asking, you know, and cats sometimes mm-hmm. asking about, hey, how do I, you know, what do I get? But I love that your sister called you <laughs> and asked you what to get the girls. That is so sweet. <laughs> that's just, then that's what we are. It's like, 
Forget about the humans in her life. What do the kids want? What do the doggies want? So I know what to get hers, yes, and she knows what to get mine. (laughs) There'll be no disappointment under our Christmas tree. So, and for the listeners who want to find out more about Bill Jack, more where they can learn more about you, where can they go? Yeah, come out to our website. That's a great place to start. It's uh, billjack.com. It's B-I-L-J-A-C.com. And we have information out there about holidays, about gifts if you're a little bit late, you know, looking for something, you know, to get your, your pet. Um, and also just some great information about nutrition and uh, feeding and treats, all, you know, all kinds of good things to be able to go out there and see. As always, I thank you very much. Thank you for bringing us such uh, great holiday tips and for sharing your little uh, story about you and Blizzard. And um, I wish you, everyone at Bill Jack, a very Merry Christmas. And thank you so much. Thank you. And we wish everyone a very happy and safe holiday season as well. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up, a new children's book that sees animals in their natural way. Stay tuned. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Sandra Mendelson is an animal channeler and communicator, an author and speaker, and she's also a certified polychromatic light therapist, equine photopuncture therapist, and a health coach. And today we're going to welcome back Sandra, and she is here to discuss the second book in the Secrets of Animal trilogy, where her dog, Mr. T, guides children through amazing and different journeys in each of the books. So Sandra, welcome back to the Doggy Diva Show. Oh, Susan, thank you. It's so good to be back here, always. I know. I can't believe we're talking about a third book, second book in your in your trilogy. Um, but for those listeners who may not be familiar with your amazing work, can you share a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. Um, uh, to wrap it all up, I think it started about seven years ago when uh, I basically was uh, nudged by the universe mm-hmm. to shift from doing body work on horses to actually uh, hearing them and and channeling messages. And, and from the horses, 53 species came through, and I created my first book, um, Animal, um, We Walk Beside You, Animal Messages for an Awakening World, because we don't know that the animal kingdom knows that what they do and the perspectives that they have to help us so much because they're not trapped in the human experience. And Mr. T, my dog, during all of this, kept nudging me. I kept asking him what had happened to him, you know, prior to uh, being found on the side of the road by a young man, and he only wanted to talk about children. He didn't want to talk about hardship. He wanted to focus on empowering children to, to access their own intuitive abilities because they can all communicate with animals, but it's something that isn't encouraged in our traditional educational system. We are all multisensory. We all have the ability to connect with all life. And so he said, well, I think you should ask the other animals what they want to contribute. That might be important. And 12 species immediately came through in that one afternoon. So I said, you know, I don't know how to create a fake story. If you ask me to tell you a bedtime story and make it up, it's going to be a really long night. But what I could do is take the lessons from that all these animals were sharing with children and turn it into rhyme. And Mr. T, being the, ide- the ideator here, is a, is a guide. So in each of um, the three books that will be uh, that will comprise the trilogy when it's totally complete, um, in book one, which is out, um, Mr. T takes 
the children through the neighborhood. And uh, they learn from him, from dogs, that they are loved. And, you know, they get basically these special animal secrets. The, and they learn the animal wisdom ways that will enable them to connect with animals. To, so they learn to observe everything. And that fear, a, a lot of people write into me that their kid, their child is the most affected by secret number six or a bat shares with children that fear is mostly made mm. up. Amazing that that's the mm-hmm. one, right? right? It yeah. shows you that even kids at six, you know, are dealing in such a big way with fear and how that secret in particular really gets through to them. But the animals go on and encourage them to, you know, be be their word, you know, say what you mean and mean what you say and show it up with your actions, you know, show up in the world so that people know who you are um, and to come outside and be quiet and see beauty. So, so book one is around the neighborhood. And then book two that we're kind of here to talk about today came out, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, and it's called uh, The Secrets of the Animals, What's Up Down on the Farm? So in book two... Um, we're going to get into more uh, more ways of being about feeling peace and grounding energy, and um, we're dealing with things like bullying and energy. Uh, you know what it feels like when all of a sudden you feel something and you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> but again, everything is designed from the animal by the animals to empower children to understand abilities that they have that they didn't get from mom, dad, or teachers and that they didn't learn in school. Sandra, how does your work with animals influence your writing? Because I would think that your perspective, which you have a very uh, high and very gifted perspective and insight, how does that affect and influence your writing? Because your books, you know, your children's books are so... You know they're not they're not only inspirational but they're educational at the same time, um, but they're done in a way that's very unique and um, very special. Can you share like how your work with the animals has influenced that? I'm glad you asked that because I would be misleading if I showed up in the world as if I created this. I partnered with the animals, of course, but the the level at which they come through, the level, the oh, the awarenesses that the animal kingdom has shared with me beginning seven years ago humbled me and blew my consciousness wide open. I had no idea. And someone once said to me, you know, almost in jet, oh, so you think you're better than everyone else because you can hear the animals. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, no, I just want to be more like them. <laughs> a I mean, good answer. <laughs> well, think about this one thing that I don't even talk about in the books. Imagine, especially as a woman, spending your entire life never having to look in a mirror. Mm. How different would your time yes. and energy be allotted and focused if the outside never, ever came into practice? And when I feed the squirrels, I noticed one was covered in mange. She had bloody spots all over him. He acted no differently, and he was treated no differently by all the other squirrels. It it was relevant. And that's so important because that's also a lesson we can teach our children that, you know, that it, that, you know, looking in the mirror, we see back an image, and I guess we could decide what the images we want to see back is, is kind of what I I, I see that you're saying. It's kind of like you could look in it and go, you know, I need to lose five pounds or, you know, my hair, I wish my hair. But if you look at it with love for yourself, which is, I think what you're doing in these books, you're teaching the children, the beauty of animals and the beauty of how the animals look at themselves. And they look back and they just see each other as, you know, unique beings. Well, again, that is, you know, one of my favorite secrets in this new book is secret 14. Things aren't always how they look. And it was a very special real life bull who is no longer on the earth who delivers this secret. And if you think about it, everybody always runs to the cows and they look at the bulls, you know, like, oh, they're big and scary. But the message is, you know, you look at your, at our outsides, but they cannot show the magic within us that takes time to know. So when people think that we're mean or don't care because of the serious faces we wear, 
we want you to know that it just isn't true. We're friendly and playful, and we need love too. The same goes for humans. You each wear a shell, but your special stuff is inside. We can tell. So give folks a chance, and their light will shine through, and then you'll see humans like animals do. Because they see what mm-hmm. really matters. Yes. They are inspiring the children to do the same. Well, and with the title of the second one, um, What's Up, Down on the Farm, can you share some of the animals that are featured in the book? Oh, and you absolutely. do it in such a beautiful way. Again, because what horses are doing on this planet is so extraordinary. Um, I mean, there really are four species, horses, whales, dolphins, and elephants that do tremendous amounts of energy work. And it isn't to negate any other species. It is just, I mean, let's face it, look what, what we learn about unconditional love from mm-hmm. our dogs. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, on the you know, they incarnate in these species and do tremendous amounts that we don't even know about. And horses are of those four species, horses, whales, dolphins, elephants, the horses are partnering with humans. And unlike the other three, uh, you know, horses are, are really steeped in the human condition. Mm-hmm. So we have two horses in this book that start out talking about, and these are in in this particular case, these are two real horses um, that I got these messages from right here in Jupiter Farms about how kindness is what actually gives you power. Mm-hmm. And and because of the way the horses live, and, and again, I can certainly read you clips if you want, but I want to, you know, just use that time productively here as you, as you like. But horses create harmony. In fact, I'm actually reviewing someone's book now and they channeled horse consciousness and it was fascinating to hear the same things that I got that we kind of mistake love because it comes you know with possessiveness and all kinds of other human weird things but if you seek to create harmony that is one of the greatest ways if not the best way to love Mm -hmm. because what you're doing is the horse's way seeking what is best for all so Basically, what the, the horses are saying is that being gentle and kind make you strong. And the second horse talks about if you want to connect with animals, like if you watch how they live, and you'll see that they're calm and peaceful most all of the time. So if you want to connect with animals, you have to start to feel peace like they do. And so they give the kids ways to sit outside and feel peace and calmness, because even as young as three years old, they're already, you know, steeped in the do and the excess, uh, the uh, the communication onslaught that is our society, right, with the handhelds and the, yeah. you know, that stuff. So um, connecting with the peace that's in the sun and the clouds and the plants, come outside and let all these things become part of them. And so and then, of course, because we humans are complicated, Mr. T is like, now just hold your horses or I'll start to, to yelp. I think that the humans may need some more help. So, you know, you see most of us here in animal land feel calm in a way humans can't understand. But we know a trick. It's the thing that they need. So our kind of peace can be theirs. Yes, indeed. And Secret 11 will give them the key. Let's learn what it is from a goat named Daphne. So Daphne will show the children how to ground their energy into the earth, which we know is a very powerful exercise. You know, it's helpful that you that you do this and that you take everyone through the secrets because you're right. You just said how, you know, we're kind of like in a handheld technological society. You, you know, the children or anybody could be texting someone who's sitting on the next, next bench. Yeah. Right. And it's like, wow, can you like talk to me? But they don't think that way. They're like, oh no, this is the way we communicate. And I think that what your book does is it helps to open them up to explore sitting on the ground, looking at an animal, listening to what they may be feeling, like connecting with them and also connecting with the earth. It just gives it such a different perspective for the parents to work with their children so that it kind of takes that 
you know, handheld thing out of their hand for a while and like sort of, and I'm sure, Cinder, you were like me when we were younger, the the nature and animals and being out in the yard and picking flowers and things like that was so important to us. And I think that there's not a place for them to explore that. And your book helps open them up to that. Well, I, number one, I couldn't agree with you more. Number two, there is actually an author who coined a term NDD, Nature Deficit Disorder, mm-hmm. because when you take an animal out of its environment and you see, oh, yes, it has mental it has mental problems. The polar bear that's slamming its head against the wall in a zoo, what you've done is you've prevented the brain from signaling back and forth with its environment because animals experience that oneness. Mm. Well, guess what? His hypothesis, this author Richard Louvre, is like, well, isn't it possible that at least some of this broad spectrum of behavioral disorders that we see, you know, one out of every 10 or 11 kids is a documented ADD, ADHD. Yeah. Could it be the separation from the natural world? And that resonated with me because, as you said, we would go out and get dirty and we'd ride our bikes yes. without helmets. Mm-hmm. No one ever got hurt. Nobody ever worried about, you know, crime and dirt and, you know, we weren't on computers and, and all that stuff. And so I had a squirrel just say, you know, I said, what would you say to children? And I didn't put this in the book per se. And he's like, number one, tell them to learn how to be kind to each other so they don't grow up like and become angry adults. Tell them to put, there's too many square things in their hands. Tell them to just come outside and learn how to be with each other and to learn how to be with us, to have the patience, and then we will come around them more. We all want this instant gratification and the kids are picking it up. They can Google and they think they know the world, Mm -hmm. but there's just so much wisdom in learning how to wait for a butterfly to come to come out of a chrysalis. You know, we are meant to be diurnal creatures to, in sync with the rhythms of nature. And we've kind of blown that all apart, mm-hmm. but it, it's not too late to get it back. So it was actually, again, not something I created. It was messaging from the animals themselves saying, hey, this is where you guys are out of balance. You know, I, I certainly not in the kids' book, but I even had a, a squirrel say, "You know, you think it's so so much fun, and you and you drink, but it causes your energy fields to get chaotic and drives you further and further away mm-hmm. from your true self." Mm-hmm. So the animals feel the chaos, energy fields. And I want to talk uh, briefly at the end of our interview about about the first book, which well, I I absolutely I loved your children's books, but I love this, and but I want to get into. The first book, Inside Your Amazing Neighborhood, phenomenal. What's up down on the farm? And it takes the perspective of all these different animals. So can you share with us what we could look forward to in the third book in the trilogy? (laughs) (laughs) Of course. Well, first we did the neighborhood animals. Then we did animals you find less often on a farm. And then we're going to go out into the jungles and the forests and the deserts and the oceans and the plains of the world where, um, you know, I have these channelings already. So very much of what they have to share gives the children an understanding of the power of their own minds to create reality. And using your mind, for example, a I can't remember if it was a rattlesnake or a cobra, said your mind is a factory making things that you think. And while some are real good, there are others that stink. <laughs> and so it, they go on to show the kids how to select the thoughts that make them and other people feel good, that make them want to participate in the world. Oh, my goodness. About how you view something, like a burden. You know, like I remember from the animal message cards, you know, if you focus on a burden, you will tire. Mm-hmm. If you focus on an opportunity for yourself or others, you'll be energized. I mean, let's face it, the kids are going to go through life with always having things that they have to do. Yeah. And, and it's so, so there will be a lot of stuff on how they use their mind, how they see things. Yeah. I mean, wow, I've got sloths, I've got elephants, I've got leopards, I've got all kinds of wild animals that have come through, um, in, in such powerful ways to, because it all isn't it that, you know, all the animals keep saying, all respect, all healing, all joy comes from self-love, comes from and how you look at things. It's an inside job. Mm-hmm. So that will be really the focus of the 
of the third book in the kids trilogy. Well, and you'll have to come back on when that one comes out because we'll talk about that. But speaking for myself as a child, I didn't have these kind of books. So what I would do is I'd be going through the Encyclopedia Britannica, looking up a sloth, looking up a tiger, looking just to get my own feeling because there are things I didn't see. They weren't around me all the time. Yeah, well, you know, we had squirrels and, you know, all these different animals around that I tried to connect with. I was blessed with a grandmother who well, I think I told you the last time you're on the show, our front porch was like a triage. I'd bring everything home. She'd get out a shoebox and I'd bring everything home and go, could we save this? Some of them were not not savable, but we had, it connected me to a different level of working with the animals. I really loved it. It wasn't only having a pet, it was working with all of them. And that's what your books remind me of. Your books remind me, take me back to, you know, my youth when I had that. And we, um, we communicated in our own way with the animals and it was a very special, uh, bond. And speaking of that, mm-hmm. I want, I want to take uh, the listeners to your first book. And before we close out, I just wanted to get to this book here because um, it's called We Walk Beside You. And the animal message cards that you created, there were insights and wisdom of the animals. And I got this when it first came out. I have the, I have a little table next to my reading chair and I have these cards out on the table and they're absolutely, they're not only beautifully designed, they're gorgeous, the colors, it's beautiful. But the each one has a, a saying that is inspiring and insightful in its own. And it kind of helps me when I start out my day, I randomly pick one. Can hmm. you just share briefly about, you know, we walk beside Beside you and your animal message cards? I would love to. And, and first, what I'd love to just uh, ask listeners, you know, they, there is so very much that I'm sharing that they can just go check out on my blog to see if this is, you know, what resonates with them. So I, there's over a hundred blog postings of deeper messaging, you know, from mm-hmm. the animals. Certainly on my Facebook page, I put and LinkedIn and uh, and Instagram. You know, I'm constantly putting out messaging um, so that if people then decide they want to know more and they want to in- incorporate it into their life, then they can check out "We Walk Beside You," um, the book and the message cards, which are on Amazon. And uh, the book alone, uh, not the message cards, is is also on Barnes and Noble. So, you know, it it was. Uh, you know, we if, if you're lucky, you have some magic moments in your life that just create incredible halos for you, and you're never the same after that. And it it, it did all begin with a horse. While I was, you know, very unglamorously, while I was uh, working on a horse's foot, we were alone in the barn. I'm trying not to end up in a pile of horse poo, <laughs> crawling on the ground, and this voice booms in my head: "This hay is crap." <laughs> And I look up and I notice that the horse is kind of slinging hay off the top of the bale. And a woman, one of the horse owners comes in about five minutes later and announces, there's mold all over the hay. Of course, I didn't know anything about hay. (laughs) I was busy working (laughs) on injuries. And the same horse, when a horse is being rehabbed uh, and is being ready ready to be ridden again, they usually will give the horse a little sedative so they don't overdo it. And uh, this very horse, who would normally eat my hand for a carrot, would not take it. I hear that voice again, this, um, get me out of here. And the trainer comes around a nanosecond later and overdoses the horse on sedative. He's okay, but his head hit the ground. And then a couple of weeks later, uh, my whole life changed. When uh, a horse at a barn down the road said, when the barn closes at 4 o'clock, we can drop the facade and be our two selves. We hear the birds speak. The plants speak. Everything speaks. And it cracked wide open from there. It was, you know, three years of, okay, what do I do with these kinds of things? And uh, I was doing animal communication work unintentionally where someone would have a problem with their horse and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And the horse would kind of appear behind my eyes, even when I was brushing my teeth, and say, it's all in my head and my eyes, or, you know, our ma- human mom is sick and doesn't know it. You know, stuff that there's just no way I could know mm-hmm. that enable people to solve problems. And then the horses pushed me, and they said, okay, here's where your telepathic commu- uh, abilities come, come in. Tune into anyone from anywhere. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I sat down with a pad, and the pen starts going, you know, I'm just like writing immediately, almost unintelligibly, and a 
water buffalo and a sacred cow in Mumbai and a blue whale came through with messages that were so mind-blowing to me that I called my mom and I'm like, Mom, you've heard me say this before. Mm. And she's like, relax, that's not you. You're funny, but you're not that funny. And you're (laughs) smart, but you're not that wise. And she knows me inside out and backwards. And I needed that because, you know, the biggest issue for us as we are waking up um, to our multi-sensory abilities, which we all have, is believing what we get. You know, with the, I have women that friends that are telling me, oh, my God, I don't know where I know what's going to happen the next day. Where did this come from? Yeah. Um, or I'm hearing, you know, so-and-so that crossed over. Yes, we are waking up if we allow it and we don't go into doubt and fear. So that was the premise. And, the, you know, the book then unfolded from it became a book because it, it was over 53 species that just kept mm-hmm. coming through. The better the question I asked, the better the answer. And um, it is all to help us humans uh, move through life with more understanding and joy and ease. Well, and uh, and, and yeah. that's when you first came into my life when I got this book, and I and I have to thank you. As an adult, I think that adults should read this book, have a, a great understanding, incorporate all of these beliefs into the beautiful children's trilogy that you have. And what I want to ask you is where can the listeners go to find out more about you? You have such awesome work. You have the blog. You, there's a lot that you have going on, and you have such tremendous insight. Your books, including the recent release of the second book of the trilogy, What's Up Down on the Farm. Where can we go to learn more about you? The easiest thing is just to go to my website because everything is on there or we'll lead them to a link if they want to buy something. But the kids' books has its own page on the website. You know, we walk the, the book in cards has its own page. My work and my animal communication work is on there. So they can, and of course the blog is there, which is, you know, since November of 2016, I've been putting animal channelings yeah. on the blog. So it's just S Mendelson, S M E N D E L S O N dot com. And they can just explore as they want to. Well, I think that when they explore it, they'll be very happy they did. It's a great way for uh, parents to help their children communicate in the animal world. And it also, if someone's looking for a very inspirational and uh, a very calming and zen book, I really loved the first book. And as I told you, those cards are a part of my life. Um, And I think that I got them, what, three years ago? (laughs) Yeah, I got them then. And they're a big part of my life. So As you are too, Sandra. Um, So I want to thank you so much for being our guest today and for all of the beautiful and amazing work that you do with the animals and also that you're doing with the children and people to learn how to communicate and listen to their hearts and get reacquainted with our earth, the animals, and, and things that are that are good in our lives. So I thank you for doing that because that's what you're all about. Well, I, I thank you for having me here. And, and by the way, I do have an article on my website. If people can't find it, it's on the blog about how they can start connecting, you know, certain things to do to get into that vibration and head frame where they can start connecting with the animal world on their own. Well, as always, I thank you again. And we, can you just give out your website one more time for the listeners? Of course. It's S. Mendelson.com, S-M-E-N-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. And uh, they can also follow Sandra underscore Mendelson on Instagram. Uh, or <laughs> I have a Facebook page called We Walk Beside You. Um, there's a group. I mean, it's just the more you, as much as they want, it's out there. It's out there. We, there's a contact form, by the way, if they have questions on my website, they can just shoot me an email. Okay? Awesome. Well, thank you so very much. Have a great holiday, a wonderful new year, and please connect with us when the third book comes out. We're going to love to talk to you about that. So thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Susan. Happy, uh, healthy new year. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say... 
Please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com. Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and the Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.